Hello everyone, I am Surya. Today I am going to talk about detection of R peaks in ECG signals using MATLAB. The content we are going to cover in this presentation is how is ECG recorded, why ECG occurs and the detection of R peaks in measuring the heart rate of a person using MATLAB. ECG introduction. The heart muscles contract and expand to generate electrical signals that is recorded as ECG. In simpler terms, ECG is the measured electrical activity of the heart. ECG can be measured by placing electrodes at specific positions on the skin. The ECG looks like this. Uh, one period of the ECG signal looks like this. It has the P wave, PR segment, QRX complex segment, ST segment and the T wave. We will try to detect the R, the R peak in this presentation. A general noise corrupted ECG signal looks like this. A closer look at the signal. So these are the R peaks here. Steps for detection of R peaks. For, uh, first step, remove the low frequency components. Change the frequency, change to the frequency domain, remove low frequency components and come back to time domain. Step 2. Find local maxima using windowed filter. Step 3. Remove small values, storing the significant ones. Step 4. Adjust the filter size and repeat the steps 2 and 3. So this is the output for a, sing uh, for a sample signal. Step 1. This is the input. And then next step, after removing the lower frequency components, the signal looks like this. After using the windowed filter to detect the peaks, the signal looks like this. Now, use threshold, removing the small peaks and storing only the significant peaks. Now, the signal looks like this. You use an adjusted filter and recalculate the peaks and it looks like this. This is your final result. The final result of the algorithm looks like this. You have these peaks, uh, you show these peaks being superimposed on, on the ECG signal. Calculating the heartbeat. This is my contribution to the code. Heartbeat, heartbeat rate in beats per second can be calculated using the following formula. Rate equal to 60 into sampling rate divided by RR interval. So RR interval is the distance between these both. But uh, in our case, we are going to take the average RR signal, which is the distance between this and this divided by the total number of peaks. Most of the content in this presentation has been picked up from the YouTube video and this code. I don't, I don't own any of these pictures and take no credit for the code in this presentation except for the heartbeat calculation part. Thanks. After opening MATLAB, you have to go to the directory where you downloaded the code. And then, to open this .m file, double click it. To run the code, just type the same here, ecgdemo.m. So, just type ecgdemo. As you have already seen how the algorithm works, let us see its implementation in MATLAB. Let me run this first. So, this is your output. This is your result for the sample 2 and this is your result for sample 1. So let us understand the code by keeping breakpoints at specific locations. Ok, now our code works like this. For demo equal to 1 in steps of 2 until 3, which means your loop runs for demo equal to 1 and demo equal to 3. First you clear all variables, then when the value of demo is 1, you load sample data 1 and when your value of demo is 3, you load sample data 2. Both of them are there in, in the location where I am working. 
First, as we have discussed before, we remove the lower frequency components. How we do it? We do it by shifting into the Fourier domain first, which is this step. And then we make all the, all the low frequency components zero. Let us see the value of, of this. So the value of this is 233 and the length of your sample is 44 k 44,604. So you are making the first 233 values in the frequency domain to zero. And then the next step, you are also making the last 233 values to zero. So uh, this means that you are uh, removing the low frequency components and then you do the an inverse Fourier transform to get the corrected ECG signal. You take the window size as 571. You make sure that the window size is odd. Then you use this, this function, which is the windowed filter which, which we were talking about in the algorithm, to calculate the filtered peaks. Now, the filtered one is normalized to the value of 7 here. And what this loop corresponds to is if the value of the peak is less than 4, then consider it as no peak. And if the value of peak is, equal, is greater than 4, take it as a peak. So if there's a peak, it's 1. And if there's no peak, it's a 0. You find the positions of peaks and save it in this, in this array called positions. And you calculate the distance between 2 and 1. And then you use this loop. At the end of this loop, each time inside this loop, you are comparing the distance between two corresponding peaks. And if it's less than distance, you make distance equal to the distance between the peaks. So what happens here is that you get the minimum distance between two successive peaks. And then now you optimize the filter window size. You take this variable called QR QR distance, you do the same thing here, and then you take the optimized window size as 2 into minimum distance between peaks minus QR distance. You repeat the algorithm again for detecting the peaks with the corrected window size. Now, the your peaks are in filter 2. Now, uh, you do the same thing again. Uh, if, if the value is less than 4, you take it as a peak. And if the value is greater than 4, you, you, if it's less than 4, you take it as no peak. And if it's greater than 4, you take it as a peak. And this is my contribution to the code. You, what you do is you find the positions of all the peaks here. And the distance between first and last peak would be calculated by this step. And the average distance between the peaks would be distance between first and last peak divided by total number of peaks. The average heart rate of human, as, as uh, described before, is calculated by this formula. And it is displayed on the screen. Later, you display all other signals. You use figure to get a new window. You use subplot 3 comma 2 to uh, get a 3 by 2 matrix on your figure. OK, let me show this to you. So you get a figure now until this step. Now, when you do subplot, let me go for one step. You get this. Your screen is divided into 3 by 2 parts, 3 vertically and 2 horizontally. And this takes the first position. And then you give it a title and y-axis limits. You can see the title coming up here. Similarly, you plot all the other signals that we have worked with. And, and this is what we get for the first sample. We repeat the same for the second sample too.
and we get this. This way, the heart rate can be calculated. Uh, the heart rate from ECG signal can be calculated using MATLAB. The code and other resources will be linked in the description of this video. Thanks.